Scotland and Ireland will be back in action with four T20Is in Belfast. And the mention of Scotland invariably throws up the names of the Bryce sisters. In this edition of Beyond the Boundary, I have with me the Scotland skipper, Catherine Bryce. Hi, Catherine. How have you been? Uh, how's the training been for the series against Ireland? Hi, uh, good, thanks. Um, thanks for having me. Um, it's been going quite well. Um, so obviously me and Sarah have been in Loughborough training training down here but everyone's been able to kind of get back outside <clears throat> in Scotland and the weather's not been brilliant I don't think but the girls have been getting up early and having sessions kind of before they've been going off to work and, and things like that and getting in some some good fielding sessions outside at different times so I think um, with the new head coach Mark being able to travel around and, and getting to see a lot more of the girls I think the preparations have been pretty good um, kind of heading into the series. Uh, you still not uh, kind of linked up with the squad. Scotland's been out of action for a long time. Does that worry you? Because there's going to be a very small time that you and uh, Sarah will get with the squad together. Yeah, I think we know um, most of the girls pretty well, and we've kept in touch kind of over the last year. Done so many different Zoom sessions and and things like that, kind of keeping the squad. Um, taking over together and, and keeping us all kind of ready but I think Ireland will be in a pretty similar place like they've their last international series was at the same time in September 2019 so I think with the girls have had a few games um, in the in the county championship down south um, to kind of play together as a squad but hopefully um, kind of with the training we've got and it'll we'll just all come back together and, and it'll just click when we get back out there. You and Sarah have been given the professional contract by the ECB. Did it ever kind of cross your mind that you want to play for England or some such? Um, I think it's all something you thought of when we were growing up. And um, I think that's the only the only kind of level that you saw um, as being able to play cricket professionally was, was playing for England and, and making it. So to kind of be able to have a professional contract and full-time contract playing cricket, but also being able to play for Scotland is um, a brilliant place to be in at the moment. Yeah, the thoughts of playing for England aside, you are contracted, you are full-time professional player. So tell us more about the impact that it has, it has had on your game in terms of training, routine, recovery and whatnot. Yeah, I think we've been really lucky kind of in the past anyway. Loughborough have got a brilliant um, cricket programme here. so. We've probably trained over the last four or five years pretty professionally anyway. Um, but I think um, just the added uh, level of competition that you've got around all the regions and a larger number of players kind of understanding um, how to train at a, a professional level, um, I think really pushes on the standard. Um, around around the team so it's not just the people that you're training with but constantly the, the games that you're playing with every weekend are more competitive and to a higher standard so it kind of pushes you on when when you're at training as well to to kind of get to the next level um but yeah i think having the opportunity to to really concentrate on cricket and not have to to think about um getting a full-time job or a part-time job to do alongside cricket um when you come out of university is 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 huge really um I don't think it really it'll really sink in until we've probably finished uni and 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 cricket is kind of the main focus um, and you're just doing that so yeah it's a, a brilliant opportunity to have. And then how do you kind of react or adapt to the different levels of play when you kind of move from the professional setup in England to back to your national side in Scotland? Yeah, I think the the main thing is just to to take as much experience that we've got. Um, from having a professional setup here and, and take that to Scotland and kind of use that experience to, to kind of push on the girls in Scotland as well and um, show them what level they're able to play at with, with the extra training. And it's, it's hard um, having to go in early before work and, and fitting it all around that. But actually, the more that we can, we can share, um, the better it will be for the whole squad. Let's look a bit ahead. You are all set to play the hundred. Thoughts on the on the new format? Yeah, really exciting. Um, not not played a hundred game yet, so I think 
the kind of marketing and and everything that the the ECB have put into to promoting the competition, I, I think it'll be amazing to see um, the number of people that come al- come along to watch the games and and young young kids, but also anyone that just kind of wants a day out and probably post COVID as well. Anyone will I'll take any any sort of socialising that they can get, have a drink and and watch the cricket. I think. Um, I think it'll be huge and yeah just really exciting to play in a competition that's kind of been given so much backing as well. The strength rockets versus oval invincibles might be a clash that the bright household <laughs> will be kind of picking up and watching eagerly. You almost always played with Sarah besides you in your team. How are you looking forward to this new challenge? Yeah definitely there's only been a f- um I reckon only a couple of games that we've we played against each other, um, so it'll be quite strange, I think, um, going up against each other, someone that you know so well and, and play alongside kind of almost every day. Um, so I'm not sure sure how the parents will will be, whether they'll take one one child each or whether they'll just be like n- not worried about who wins. But um, I hope that we both just get, just get on well. So. Um, yeah, obviously, hope that she gets on well in the competition. But um, when it comes to playing against each other, it'll be um, be good, good fun to to kind of fight it out and the battle of the household. <laughs> right, coming back to this series, uh, how important is it from the point of view of looking forward? Because it's going to be an year of qualifiers. So in that respect, how do you play the Ireland series? Yeah, I think it's huge, really. To it'll probably take a bit of time to kind of assess where we're at and take as much as we can from from the last couple of years. I think the squad developed massively over um, the 2019-2020 winter and and I think it would have been really exciting even last year to see how much they developed. So hopefully all of those developments can kind of continue in into this series and I think it's really big big for the team because if we can get, get some more ranking points in ready uh, going into the European qualifiers and a bit of confidence and 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 things about us re- ready to kind of go and play Ireland and all those other teams in that qualifiers that um, even if we don't finish top, then hopefully with the ranking points, you know, we'll still qualify for the, the global qualifiers. Um, I think if we can take a lot of confidence out of this, then it gives a real boost to kind of go in and really aim for winning that competition in, in August. Right, and lastly, tell us who could be, you think, the key players for Scotland in this series. Of course, you're also being led by a new head coach in Mark Cole. So, key players and your, how do you kind of uh, plan to go ahead with Mark Cole? Yeah, really exciting to have a new coach in. Um, I think it'll be brilliant. Just the energy that he's brought, um, even in this first month or so that, that he's been, been with the squad. Um, I think Becky Glenn will be um, one to look out for and kind of, in the top order somewhere and um, she can make some big contributions but also kind of busy around the field and a really good fielder in there so it can make a real real impact there and I think Catherine Fraser is a young one that um, will be really key with the ball and I think she showed kind of the maturity that she's got at such a young age already um, over the last couple of years so um, really looking forward to to kind of seeing how they get on but I think just as a squad as a general just kind of looking forward to to all gang out there together and, and seeing how we get home. Right, Catherine, thanks for your time. It was lovely chatting to you on this edition of Beyond the Boundary. Thanks very much for having me.